Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is string, the find and get substring nodes. I've gone ahead, fired up this quick little example. Let's jump right in. So when I run what I have now, you're going to see we have this is a long string of long text. And we have a few spaces in front of it, as you can see with the white background behind it. What we're going to do is use the find substring to find the, the word long and tell us where it's at. So find substring is pretty simple. You can find it by typing in substring when you pull off of a string. And it'll be under the string settings, find and get substring. Now the find substring will basically take in a string, take in what part of that string we want to find, as another string and then return back in terms of the index where it is. Keep in mind even though the string is, looks like a bunch of letters, it's still an index. The first space is zero, second space is one, third space is three, and it goes along. So let's set it up like this. We have our long string going into our search in, we have nothing in our substring, and we're returning back the index. If we hit play, you'll find we have an index of negative one, and that is to be expected. Just because there's nothing in the substring doesn't mean it counts as a space or a blank. It counts as nothing. Since this entire string is compromised of something, even spaces count as something, it's going to return back a negative one because we have not actually found anything. So let's put in our substring. Let's type in long. And notice I have a capital L. When we hit play, we're going to find index of 13. Now if we look at our string, you'll notice long is in here twice. When you are searching, it's going to return back the first index when it matches this word. Exactly. We have other options to change that, and we'll cover those in a second. But for now, we search for the word long with a capital L, and it starts at index 13. Now for our options, let's go ahead and use the use case. We'll go ahead and run it again, and you'll notice it runs fine. Well, it runs fine because we're looking for long with a capital L, and we have long with a capital L. If we were to change this to the lowercase l, well, you know we're going to run into an issue. First of all, if you just change it and hit play, it's not going to change. If you actually change it and hit enter, it's still not going to change. There's an issue with strings as of the current version where it will not, it doesn't see it as a change, even though the case has changed, so therefore it will not change it. What you need to do is just change the word itself, maybe delete the L, then go back into it, go ahead and put in our lowercase L, and now we actually have the change accepted. Now when we run this, we're going to find index of negative 1. We are telling it to look for the string with the lowercase L, and our sentence only contains the uppercase. So let's go ahead and uncheck this and hit play again, and you'll notice it finds it. It's not using case sensitivity. It's going to go ahead and just basically try to find that word in there no matter how it's cased. Our next one is search from end. Basically, we're going to search not from the beginning, but from the end. So if we hit play this time, and we actually check it and hit play this time, you're going to find it now gives us an index of 28. Because instead of starting from here and stopping at 13, it starts from here, goes backwards, and finds it at index of 28. Okay, we're good there. Start position is pretty simple. Basically, where do we start from? By default, it's negative one. It's at the beginning. If you want to start somewhere else, let's say you've already searched through here. You found our first one was at 13. Now you want to continue checking if there's any more instances. Maybe the next time you run through this, you're going to start at 13. So what happens if we start at 13 and we start from the beginning? We hit play. Well, you're going to find 13. Well, that's because 13 is where it starts. Let's try 14. Now we have 28. We are now starting at the O in long, which means there's no occurrence of the word long until we get to here at index 28. So that's it. That is what the find stub string does. It's useful if you need to find something specific, or maybe you want to see if they have any characters you don't want to allow, or maybe you are checking to see if they typed in something exactly. Maybe you want them to type in, hello, my name is Bob, you could do the five find substring on the entire thing, and if it returns back index zero, then the entire thing is, hello, my name is Bob. Now for the get substring. The get substring is going to return back a string. 
This one just returns the index of where the string is. This one returns back an actual string. Let's plug this in and let's go ahead and look at it. So let's run this. By default, you're going to get back nothing. Well, you're going to start at zero and get an index, a length of zero. That means you're getting back nothing. If we change our length to 10, let's say, you should get the first 10 characters. A couple spaces, this is. So what could we use this for? Well, it seems kind of silly, but you could always use get substring based on, let's say, for example, you have a long sentence and you want to randomize. Maybe you get a random part of that substring you're using as your random variable. Maybe you have one long string of 256 random letters, and let's say you want to have your stream a seed for a random number or a random generation for your level, you can basically just grab a random portion of that substring. Grab the first seven letters, grab the middle seven letters. Another version, let's go ahead and let's grab the string out of our five sub find substring. So what we're gonna do is we have a substring to get, which is long. If I take the substring to get and I plug it in here, we're now gonna get the first instance of where long is at. And if you remember, it's position 13. Let's take that return value, put it into our start index, and let's go ahead and take our substring to get, get the length, and plug it into the length. That seems kind of silly, but when we run this, we're going to get back our word long. So that's a way how to use get substring, and that's a way to use find substring. Find substring finds where the string is at, if at all. Get substring will return the string based on your starting index and your length from the source string you put in. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.